Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us. I am going to see some people are continue to join. Uh, I wanted to just welcome you to the continuation of Elevate Rapid City's virtual trainings. We are so glad that you're joining today. Um, this is so awesome what Elevate is doing. They are offering a series of trainings that cover everything from health insurance, mental health, marketing, business resources. And if you missed a training or a previous webinar that you wanted to see, you can go to Elevate Rapid City's YouTube page and these webinars will be there for you to view. Um, you can view upcoming webinars on Elevate Rapid City's Facebook page as well. So my name is Tracy Polachek. I'm with Polachek Therapy and Consulting. I am really excited to be here today. I am from the Rapid City area and during this time of crisis, uh, this is my way of giving back to my community. I have spent over 20 years in mental health therapy and social work. And part of what I do is work with businesses and agencies on program development, on team building, uh, using research-based methods for getting the best outcomes out of your team, out of yourself. And I have a passion for helping people work with purpose and joy. Um, so today, what we're gonna talk about is, I'm gonna delve into this topic of employer, how you as an employer can support your employees during this crisis situation. Um, it's so important to understand where uh, your employees were at before this all started. Some of them were very high crisis to begin with. And we're gonna delve into um, topics of how to speak and communicate. This is really uh, focusing on communication, on relationship building, and we are gonna talk about concrete resources as well at the end. Um, I'm gonna be answering some questions at the end of the webinar. So if you think of something, put it in the chat. And I will go ahead at the end and I'll close down my screen and then be available to ask questions. I will post a link to this webinar um, on my Facebook page, Polichek, P-A-L-E-C-E-K, Therapy and Consulting on Facebook. Um, you'll be able to view a link to this as well um, if you're curious about this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and try to navigate our screen here if I can. Technology is, oops. Technology is amazing. There we go. Okay. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is um, focusing on employee engagement in crisis situations. What does employee engagement really mean? Um, one of the things that I think you have to uh, understand is we're, we really want to help people. We want to be engaged prior to a crisis, ideally, and that involves relationship building. That involves a lot of what we call coaching style management. Um, even the term coach versus boss, ha those two things have very different connotations. But if you haven't always came from the coaching perspective, this might be an opportunity. Crisis always provides opportunity to see the value in switching to that style of management. We're gonna, we're gonna give you a few te techniques about how to do that today. Um, the first thing is, what is employee engagement? It really is about keeping your door open. You want to physically give the impression that if your employees are struggling with something, especially during this time, you've innovated, you've had to do different things in your business. Maybe you're closing down entirely and we are going to talk about that right now or, or temporarily. We're gonna talk about that in a little bit, but either way, we have to operate differently in business. So you wanna communicate, you wanna be available if, if they have questions, you wanna walk around the office, it's important that employees really see you pitching in and doing things you might not have done. If you're in a restaurant situation, you know, many of you owner operators are in there working, are in there doing those things. But as a manager, you want to say, here's how you can communicate with me. Um, I think the next piece is really to promote that team mentality. Again, if you think of yourself as a coach, what's the difference between a coach and a boss? A coach, if you think of a coach, 
somebody who's coaching an Olympic athlete, it's, it's this mindset that we are in this together. I am going to do my part as a coach to train you, to encourage you, to be there for you, to push you, and you're going to do your part to deliver. And our goal is the same. We want to deliver our product. We want to sell whatever your business is. It's promoting that team mentality. Some of those ways that you can do that is really keeping um, the employees involved. You want to Make sure that you know that we're in this together, even using those terms, hey, we're gonna get through this. Even using that language is important. Um, oftentimes as an owner operator or a manager, you're gonna receive information during this crisis that you don't like. There, somebody above you has decided A, B, and C is gonna happen and you don't like it. Your employees are watching how you're handling difficult information, how you're handling the next wave of, of fires that you need to put out. If they see you reacting in a manner that's that's angry or slamming doors or doing things, they're going to be really shaken mentally and emotionally. Like, boy, if my boss can't handle this, I don't know what, how I'm supposed to handle this. So being being promoting team really means like we're in this together and we can get through anything. Looking for the wins. Uh, this is a really important um, thing that we do. It's during a time of crisis, our radar is on everything that's going wrong and every problem that needs to be solved. But the most important thing we can do is switch that radar to say, what are people doing right? And how do I recognize that in the moment and over time as this crisis goes on? Really, really make, making sure you're telling people that you appreciate how hard they're working, making sure you know that they are appreciated. Um, do something, you know, whether it's, it's uh, something just a recognition, a cup of coffee, donuts, anything little that says, I appreciate you is going to help out during a crisis. Um, I think that creative, create, creating problem solving groups accomplishes so many things. It accomplishes asking your employees to help during a crisis, not just help doing the things that they need to do differently or better, but asking for their ideas in an amazing way. People want to help. They want to feel like they're contributing. Remember that team mentality. So if you can create problem solving groups that these are informal groups or formal groups, and we're going to talk about large group check ins in a little while. Um, but they really help energize and motivate staff. And believe it or not, the number one goal of these groups is not often to get problems solved. That sounds counterintuitive. It's to create a way in which people feel like they're being proactive. This is how we also foster a proactive mindset in our team versus a reactive all the time. Again, like any interaction, the first goal is relationship because you can make people do things for you in amazing ways and feel good about it if, if you put the relationship first. So it's really often how we do things that get the best results when it comes to people. So creating, what do these problem solving groups look like? Um, you can do some team decision making. In our large check-in script, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a model for that. This does not have to be a two hour long. Please don't subject anyone to a two hour long meeting. I don't even like one hour long meetings generally. Um, but this can be a really amazing, energizing time. And we'll look at that in the group check-in as well. Uh, this is really, really important that you in this time of crisis, take time out as an owner, operator, or manager, or leader to create and then commit to maintaining crisis communication channels. Now, if you don't have really great ways of communicating before, this is the time to innovate. Some of these ideas include making a Facebook page that's just for you and your folks, your employers, family members, things like that. Maybe it's an email chain, but it should be something that's easy for people to access. It should be something in which you are regularly putting out information and maintaining. And here's the next really important part. Are you all sick of hearing about COVID-19 and all the negativity? We tend to push negative information through 
employee or large group communication channels. Now, certainly you, this is where you're going to communicate. Hey, we need to do this. We need to do this. I need somebody to work here or so and so, but make sure that you're also front loading it as a leader with really positive things. This is a great time for you to say, Hey, so and so shout out to Joe who stayed late and did things that he didn't have to do. And I really appreciate it. And I just want to say, you guys, I'm thinking about you. I'm coming in tomorrow. We're going to get this done. Uh, here's a really great story about what another company is doing. Front load really good positive information as well into this. Maintain it and then funnel all your communication through it. It will streamline things. It's a place of security and it will allow people to communicate more, more uh, effectively. The last thing we're going to talk about too here is really um, planning ahead and offering concrete help and resources. Um, you know, despite your stress as a leader here, and despite all of the things that you might be stressed out about that your employees don't know about and maybe shouldn't know about, you can set aside time to intentionally plan what you can do and what you can offer your employees during this time. Now, I just did a webinar, a, a Facebook Live for Elevate, so I think it lives on their Facebook Rapid City page. I would encourage you, if you are feeling particularly stressed out as a leader, as, as an employer, that you maybe view that webinar or that Facebook Live that I did to just prioritize your own mental health, your own emotional health. There are really concrete, proactive steps you can do. And sometimes it's reaching out to a therapist like myself. Many of us are doing telehealth. But really understand your own stress and how you react and make an intentional plan to be calm, to be consistent in all of my communications with employees. Your best friend is to say, give me a moment to think about that and I'll get back to you. Because if you're feeling triggered, if you're feeling emotional, if you're feeling angry during this crisis, the worst thing you can do is communicate when you're feeling that way. So buy yourself some time. And when you sort of calm down, it really helps your mental health as an employer, as a leader, if you can offer some concrete things. and. Some of those things that we're going to talk about, um, but really, what is it that you can offer? Can you, as an employer, offer free meals to your staff? If you're, for example, in the restaurant business, if there's food left over at the end of the day, can you package that up and send it out with families? Oftentimes, if you're employing really high crisis folks to begin with, they are scared. Their hours might be cut. They kind of live paycheck to paycheck. And if they're able to divert resources that would normally go to food, um, that to keeping their other bills paid, that's going to be a huge help. Can you offer rides? Can you offer those things to clients? And we're going to um, talk a little bit more about concrete help later on. Um, but I just wanted to bring that up about what we're going to talk about as well. So another way that we get through this crisis is in really stressful times, it's very helpful to take some time to develop some scripts. Now, scripts are verbal plans that we go through ahead of time that help us communicate in an intentional way. Now, I want you to think about a time with an employee or with a with a maybe your own boss where you've had to have a really difficult conversation. Maybe somebody is coming in late all the time. Maybe somebody um, is getting in conflict with another employee. Those difficult conversations can be made easier if we sit down ahead and write out what we would like to say. And some of the um, some of the guidelines for scripts are really using, you want to have positive, calm, consistent communication. You want to have a relational approach, meaning you want to honor that relationship between you two with, with nice language, calm language. You want to be clear and you want to be solution focused. Um, what I thought I could offer you is this is often where employers come and ask, how do we do this? How do we train our managers to communicate better? The goal here is 
we use script writing. So today I've written two scripts for you and I've actually written a template page and this template page will be posted on Elevate Rapid City's webpage and it will be on their business resources section. And we're gonna talk a little bit about individual scripts first. Um, we're doing, I've written one for an individual session with a client or with an employee and a group check-in process. Now, why do we do check-ins, right? Why, why is it important to check in? It's even more important to check in during a crisis because things change quickly, both for your employees and for yourself. So you wanna have a built-in way of checking in with your employees. Now, depending on the type of business you have, you have to determine how often, but I recommend in a crisis that you're doing this at least weekly. And if you yourself can't check in with everybody, maybe you check in with your frontline managers and you train those frontline managers with these scripts on how to check in with those other employees that they're responsible for. But the goal is you want, number one, to strengthen that relationship. It's always about saying, I'm here, I'm the person that you can count on, I am calm, I'm consistent, and if you have anything you need to talk about, you can come and check in with me, and this is a good time to do it. You're also in these check-ins, you're assessing impact. What's really going on with my employee? Are they dealing with things that I don't know about that could impact their work, that could impact our services, that could impact them that I might be able to help with? Do they have any immediate needs that I can help solve? Um, it, are there upcoming potential challenges to working that I can head off and be proactive? Again, we want to be proactive in our check-ins. That's a proactive practice versus waiting for people to come to us with problems. And then of course, we wanna spend some time with that employee. We want to do some problem solving. People are their own best resource. When you look at somebody and say, how are you planning on solving this? You're acknowledging that this unique, complex human being in front of you is the expert on their life and what they're going through and probably has some good ideas and that you as the employer might have some resources or other ideas that can help as well. So these are really the goals for an individual check-in. Let's go through this script. Now, I know it's a terrible PowerPoint slide to have all these words, but I wanted you guys to be able to read it. And this is the script. This is a sample script. The thing about scripts here is you need to take this. And what I recommend when you're first using scripts is that you either take this and edit it so that it sounds like you, that it sounds like your words keeping the process in place and the goals in place, and then print them out and have them with you. You know, it's okay to have a piece of paper with you when you're doing an employee check-in, hey, and maybe take a few notes, that's okay, but the best part is you have that script right in front of you at first. The best scripts are things that you memorize over time, right? So you'll get, this will be down in your memory if you start utilizing this as a leadership practice, right? But here's a way that you can say this, now again, relational, you want to just say, hey, how are you? You want to make sure when you're doing an employee check-in that you uh, have a private place. You want to say, hey, Joe, and I want you to think of this as like 15 minutes. Don't, don't, 15 minutes to a half an hour if you have it, but something as simple as 15 minutes can really, really make that connection and you can get a lot of information that you might need as a leader. Find a private place and say, hey, Joe, I just want to have a cup of coffee with you. Um, Let's, uh, let's go in like 10 minutes, meet me in here. It'll be about 15 minutes. And then try to stick to that timeline. Again, you wanna be calm, you wanna be consistent and reliable in a crisis in particular, right? So let's go through the individual script. Um, you can get Joe in and say, hey Joe, how's it going? I just wanna check in with you, see how you're doing. How are things? What do you think of all this? And then as you're listening back, remember to really listen, nod, give that nonverbal feedback. If you wanna take a few notes about what he's saying, that's great. And then Joe, you know, what are the biggest challenges that you have right now in all of this chaos that we're dealing with and all this innovative? And then listen again, this is a good place to take those notes. Remember you're assessing me, you're assessing impact and you listening and asking is building relationship. Then again, remember, everybody is their own best resource. So Joe, what, what's your current plan to deal with those, those things? How can I support that? You know, is, and then 
kind of just, there's a little problem solving that could happen there. And then, you know, is there anything that you think we can do here on the job that would help us reach our goals? Are we innovative, innovating properly? Is there anything I'm missing? I really value your opinion, those kind of process questions. Then you want to end with encouragement. You always want to end with validation and encouragement. It, it is the cornerstone of recognition. It's the cornerstone of relationship. Um, so you can say, you know what, Joe, I noticed how you handled and then really try to cite a specific situation. Again, this is you being proactive in your business, you looking for those wins, looking for those good things that are happening. And then say, I really liked how you did this. And then specifically detail, I really like how you jumped in and helped Karen when she was struggling and then went right back to what you were doing without missing a beat. I really want you to know that I appreciate that. And I really appreciate you hanging in here and being part of the team, especially with everything else that you're dealing with. Um, and then you want to, you might want to give some expectations about when you're going to check up next. Hey, thanks. I'm going to try to check in with everybody weekly, but again, you know, my door is always open. If there's something I need to know, please tell me, especially about A, B, and C that we talked to. So we're going to talk now about group check-ins. Now, I think when anybody hears the word staff meeting, do your eyes glaze over? I think there's nothing more important as a leader um, besides building relationships and having a coach mindset, then really understanding and utilizing meetings correctly. Meetings should be primarily, if you're looking for outcomes, they should be a vehicle for uniting the team, for encouragement, for team recognition, and they should not be a source of dread for people. There are instances in which team meetings are a good way to disseminate information, but often now with the way that our teams are so complex, it's so much better to deliver that information through our dedicated channels so that not everybody in the team needs to hear about everything that's going on with every team because that information sharing kind of kills that team atmosphere. Now, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't share information. It's just be really mindful of it as you're doing it. Is this the best way to get this information out? Um, also, group check-ins can be that way that you're creating that problem solving group that we talked about. You can do that every so often in a crisis. It's great. Now, again, I do not want you to kill people with meetings. We're going to be very busy. We're going to be innovating. So you can set the tone and you'll hear it in the script to decide how much time you want to problem solve. And frankly, depending on your team, how large your team is, you can spend 15 minutes on, on soliciting feedback and then invite people to send other feedback through your dedicated channel, your team communication, crisis communication channel. So this script is going to primarily focus on creating a problem solving group and, and encourage people to be recognized. So you want to be proactive. You want to solicit solutions. You can talk a little bit about challenges you're facing, but you, the bulk of this needs to be positive. Um, you want to ensure the folks, that, that your team, that their input is valuable to you, that you, you don't want to make any promises that you're going to about outcomes or that, or that any, any, that you'll use everybody's ideas, but you want to say, Hey, we're going to commit to the process of getting feedback and that you're going, you're going to take that into consideration and that they might not know every challenge you're facing, but you really appreciate it. And then you want to always comment on the good. You're going to look for the wins and you're going to shout this out to your team. Uh, you really want to be, think of yourself as a leader who's leading people through a really tough time. You want to be that calm, consistent rock and anchor, and you want to encourage them. You overcame this challenge. You showed up, you helped out, you know, tell them what they're doing well. Let's look at the script for that. So I want you all to know how much I appreciate your hard work. I've noticed people pitching in, trading shifts, cleaning up, helping prep without being asked or other specific things. You wanna be really specific about what you've noticed. It means so much to me to have such an amazing team. Together we have, and here's where you can cite what your agency or business has done. We've served, handled, sold, whatever your product is, and tell them specifically how much they've done and how great it is. And it is amazing that we've done this in this trying time. 
you know, we have some other challenges we need to tackle and I'm really wanting to get your feedback. We are facing, and here's where you can be a little bit honest. I mean, let's face it, you guys, this is one of the toughest times hopefully anybody will ever have to go through in business in our lifetime. And I think it's better to be honest about, hey, we're facing revenue losses, shortage, shortage of staff, layoffs. I'm facing, you know, I constantly have to figure out if we can keep the doors open. I mean, it's okay to say that, I think, as long as you have the support to back that up, meaning, we, I need specific help strategizing staff shortages. I need specific help strategizing tough decisions here. Who can work, who, who needs this shift, whatever it is. And then say, does anybody have any ideas about how we can approach the specific challenge? I would like to spend about 10 to 15 minutes. This is where you shape this group getting some ideas then you want to solicit that feedback you want to listen you want to thank everybody you may want to have somebody taking notes on this so that you can put that through the communication chain that can be a really positive thing to put through your communication chain. hey thanks for the group check-in thanks for the team meeting here's some of the takeaways and put it in when you're ready to wrap this up you want to go ahead and say i appreciate all of your suggestions i plan on considering these along with some other factors that I have to consider. And I will let you know, and then be specific and follow through. Remember, you're really the barometer for consistency, for follow through. You wanna do what you say you're gonna do and, you're, and in the amount of time that you say you're going to do it in. And you wanna tell them how you're gonna communicate any information you've gleaned from this. So if anyone has any questions, reach out to me by and then using your crisis channel, using a different channel, whatever you want to use at that time, let them know. And again, just end on that encouragement. Thank you so much. We're going to get through this. Okay. So just a reminder, these scripts are all written for you on a page to print out. Feel free to take it, edit it, make it in your own words, and just follow the process if you're interested in the process. So we're kind of at this stage where I want to talk a little bit about concrete help. Um, I mentioned some things earlier and I'm going to just be a little bit more specific here. Again, being a proactive leader means you are more focused at all times on what you can do than what you cannot or what is limiting you. So it is so helpful for you to sit down and say, I want to be creative. I want to know what I can do. Nothing is impossible at this point until I find out otherwise. And how creative can I be in helping? Um, we know from research that several companies who work with high crisis employees are finding different practices and innovative practices to keep people employed, to keep that retention costs down, and we're utilizing some of those here. But think about flexible scheduling during this crisis. We know that daycares are closed. We know the schools are closed right now. We know businesses are closed. Many businesses are closed your employees are scrambling to figure this out but they still want to work and if they are high crisis together and you're utilizing those individual check-ins and you're saying hey one of my best employees has to be home to take care of her kids right now is there something that you can do with her schedule can she come in when she's got backup to, to she work switch her to the night shift can we does our business have to start at this time during this crisis? Many businesses are realizing that we used to live in a 24 seven world, right? We could just walk in Well, we are home. We are going through this crisis. Many of us are in quarantine. We're self isolating and social distancing. We don't expect your business to be open 24 hours a day and accessible to us at all times. In fact, if there's any time to think about adjusting your business hours to fit your employees being able to work those hours, it is right now. So it's just something to think about. Is there uh, ways that you can look at flexible scheduling where they could work different shifts, work two hours in the morning, two hours in the afternoon, and two hours in the evening to accommodate childcare and other things that are coming up in their lives. Again, you're gonna find those things out during those individual check-ins and begin to think outside the box. Um, additional sick and personal leave, you know, many 
employers across the country are handling this differently. We don't all have infinite resources as employers. We don't all have that. But if you do, sometimes a proactive mindset says, in case, instead of dealing and requiring people to have a sick note and go into a doctor's office during a pandemic, maybe I just blanketly give all of my staff a certain number of sick time. Maybe that's what I can do as an employer right now. I know a company in Kansas that one of my friends works for just, just issued everybody 80 hours of sick time and said, take it if you're sick, do not come back if you have symptoms, we will figure this out. You do not need a doctor's note. We don't want people leaving and going unnecessarily. And that company was able to do that. And, and as a proactive approach, it was awesome because they don't have to deal with thousands, in this case, employees. It was a lot of employees across a, a large scan doing individual requests and case by case and proving it's COVID-19 related. That on it on, in and of itself can be very reactive and, and can cause a lot of time and energy. So consider that. If you can't allot sick time or your business just can't absorb that kind of a cost or shortage, think about use, utilizing tickets, you know, uh, give people four tickets every two weeks and say, these are good for an hour at a time if you have to go and solve a crisis or two hours at a time. Give, give your employees a chance to earn extra tickets if they help out or take an extra shift or, or to share tickets, you know, I'll give you this ticket or to cover. Um, we talk about cross-training a lot. Many of you are already doing a lot of these things and I just commend you, um, but cross-training can be so important here. It is, it is amazing what people can do and how great they feel about jumping in and learning a new skill and then they're available to be flexible with somebody else who needs a different schedule, a different shift. They're available when you're in a crisis and somebody gets sick in our, in our situation. And even cross-training people you might not think of, your HR people, your front desk people, to cross-training them to run some tests if you're in an educational setting or if you're in a restaurant setting, just having people do, learn how to do everything could help you keep people employed. Um, of course, I think it's really going to be key in this crisis that your employees and yourself have access to mental health or crisis intervention. And not every company can afford a big insurance plan that involves mental health, but one thing that's a great thing to do and to remind employees that it's available and make sure that they know how to access it. Uh, another thing that you can do, and I've done this before, is I've contracted with businesses to come in for a day rate to do 30 minute coaching sessions with employees who might be really stressed out. And I just find a quiet place. Now in this situation, it would be teletherapy. They would have their phone and they'd go out to their car probably and I would do this via video. But in that situation, it, you can offer that once a week or even once every two weeks and just say, hey, if you guys are struggling and you want somebody to talk to, I have my friend Tracy, who's a licensed professional counselor that's going to do some coaching sessions with you. And this is a safe, uh, confidential space for you to talk about. And it's more crisis intervention. It's encouragement. And it doesn't involve you as much in that role. So that's another idea that you could you could have. Um, it's also important to offer that to your frontline managers and owners. There's a lot of people that are going to really be stretched thin and it might be really great for them to have access to some in time mental health, anxiety, calming techniques to get them through a crisis. Um, the, another thing I really want to point out is we need to be able to utilize the resources that we have. Our community is so generous. People are doing amazing things. We are providing access and to food. We are giving people information on how to access unemployment and what to do. We're looking at creative ways that we might offer rental and housing assistance in these just unprecedented times. And one really good thing to do as an employer or a leader is to designate somebody in your agency as the resource navigator. Now, other companies hire these full time, especially if they have um, high crisis employees and they have amazing outcomes. But especially during a crisis, designate somebody to be that person that gets on the 211 website and looks what's available for food resources, what's available for utilities. I am working with the Black Hills Area Community Foundation to develop a tip sheet 
on how you navigate maybe being laid off. If your employees and you've had to lay them off, if you could send them a resource guide and send them a tip sheet and talk to them and say, here is how you do this, here are your first steps. Amazing how, of how powerful that would be. Um, but the first place to start is really designating somebody and then having them get in touch with people. A good start is going to the 211 website. They have a disaster relief page and they also have access to all different other kinds of resources. It's a good place to start. Um, I want to say uh, that I think another concrete thing that you should be thinking about is if you're hearing in your individual check-ins that people most likely are to struggle with food, childcare, and transportation assistance, what can you offer? Can you designate a person to go pick people up for their shifts if transportation is an ongoing or intermittent issue? It, can you do that temporarily? Can you help strategize childcare situations for people who are in need of childcare that still need to work? Is there a safe way keeping our CDC guidelines that we can assist with that? Or again, can we help with food if we're a restaurant or can we do food resource uh, vouchers, something that can let people divert funds to childcare? Um, can we do that? So those are things to think about. And again, you can institute your problem solving groups with your employees to think, hey, we've got to solve this. How can we work this out? How can we do this? Um, the last thing I really want to mention um, is being proactive is, is thinking about what we can do, um, honoring those businesses that are helping out and, and helping people. I mentioned Black Hills Area Community Foundation. If you have resources as an employer and you there are agencies you can go on the Black Hills Area Community Foundation website and donate to food being distributed. Um, there's restaurants like Fork Reel and Pizza Ranch and many others that are giving free meals that are doing things. Can you find a way to support those through your business? Is there a unique way that you can do that at this time and give back to our community um, in that way? I want to give a little shout out to uh, my friend Tanya Fritz at uh, Black Hills Works sent me some of the things that their agency is doing. Now they're employing a large number of what we would call high crisis employees anyway, people who struggle with food, childcare, transportation, even without being in a crisis. And some of the things that they're doing, um, they are providing um, mental health through insurance. They are sending daily wellness emails to their staff on um, physical, emotional, mental, social, and creative wellness, which is great. Those are great ideas to push through your dedicated channel. Um, they also have a bulletin board to share childcare resources and hoping to provide some funding for this. They're offering no interest crisis loans for their employees. Weekly town hall Zoom meetings uh, where all staff can ask questions to the CEO directly. Now, how cool is that? So depending on the scale and scope of your business, those are some ideas. Um, again, this is sort of a more emotional focus on these issues. This last slide here has my information. If you have any questions that you think of later, you can send me an email. Um, I want to encourage you all to think creatively. I want you to remember that we are all in this together. We are going to get through this and we're going to come out of this having learned some really amazing lessons about what's important, what we wanna focus on and what we did right. So I want you to look at your own wins and I want you to feel good about those. And please look for more webinars on the Elevate page. I'm going to do a couple more webinars in the next few weeks, some focusing on working, working remotely while your children are at home and also learning from the crisis. We're gonna do a leadership kind of learning from this crisis one in a, in a couple of weeks. So I would hope to see you there. I'm going to attempt, if I can, to close out of my screen or have Rachel, she's gonna look at the chat and see if there are any questions or comments in the chat before I head out. So let's see. I'm gonna to try to view the chat. Okay. I see Steph Rittberger, uh, my friend from the Career Learning Center. Hi, Stephanie. Um, 
wants to share this with her, this webinar with her department heads, absolutely. Uh, a link to this will be posted on the Elevate uh, webpage and link to their Elevate YouTube channel. So you can go to their YouTube channel and find this once they get it edited and put on there, as well as the script exercise will live on Elevate Rapid City's webpage under their business resources page. So anybody else want to put anything else in the chat? Don't see anything else. Oh. <laughs> Um, I just want to say thanks again. Look, look to the Elevate Facebook page to find more webinars. Uh, this is a way that businesses are giving back to their community and trying to support each other during this time. Take care of yourself. Do things that make you feel well and rested and take care out there, everybody. We're going to get through this. Take care.